Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying what you are hearing. Now, on to today's story. It's been a year since separation, how long until I'm over it? This is my story, be me, 27 years old. Just returning from overseas after a long time away from the US. Haven't lived in one place for a long time because of the military. Get on Bumble and match with a 10 tenths Latina. I'm Latino myself. I am applying for a job in a different state. Get it. Latina, and I were getting along pretty good so I told her to come with me. Get married the day before I leave. She gets there a month later. She's pregnant the month after. Big shock for all but I decided to make the best of it. Abortion is her first thought. I don't believe in it. She has a baby, and we are having a great time. Fights every now and then but overall good. Sex is good. Money is good. Things are hard because there is no help. She has a baby and wants to go to work ASAP. She wants daycare for a less than a month old baby. I say no. Wait at least six months. She is a worker but has no career. Why put my first baby in daycare when we don't have to? She's not a mother first. She hates the new state because no friends and trapped in the house all day. She is able to go to the gym during and work after I get back. I'm supportive. Just not of putting my recently born son in daycare. Fast forward a few months, and we go to her country on vacation. All her family is there. She's there for two months and I visit in between for three weeks. Her family is awesome. They love me. I found a weird search on her phone. Get back to the US and look up her search. It is a site for sugars. Make a fake sugar daddy profile and see her profile there. I want to puke. I want to rage. I want to punch things. Her pictures, in our apartment, with baby treats in the background. I didn't confront her. She still had two weeks left in her trip. I try to find an explanation but I can't. She had told me she was signing up for online classes in her country. Only she needed to take the final exam in person every four months. I conclude she was going to date sugar daddies in her country and make money on the side. WTF. File for divorce. Make plans to move back to the original state since my mom is there. She gets back and drops her off with my mom. Get to the new state and have her help me clean the apartment we were living in. She served the day after. Her initial reaction, anon, if you wanted a divorce, why go through all this trouble? She reads the papers. Gets to the prostitute part, and me wanting full custody. Freaks out and starts calling bullshit. I'm a list. I'm not a man for not confronting her. The following months were terrible. Had to wait six months to refile divorce because we were no longer living in first state. During these six months, I found out that during the two years we were married and living together she had been creating multiple sugar baby profiles and testing the waters. Waiting for the perfect opportunity to be a whore. She creates a new profile in the new state we are living in an American sugar baby site. I made a new fake profile. Match with her? Talk to her? Arrange meet up and an allowance of $1,500 monthly for twice a week encounters. Potential for more money if she can meet more. She texts my real numbers saying things like my business will soon be taking off, I'll have more time to spend with my son. She gets to the place to meet with fake sugar daddy. Snap pictures and not mention it. She then texts my real number it's a prank, smiley face, I knew it was you all along. Finally able to file for divorce in the new state. She has been begging every other month to get back together. 
I can't. I finally confront her and show her proof. She claims she doesn't remember making profiles. She claims she was pranking me with a new one. She claims she was just curious about what happens on those sites. I'm afraid of divorce. Don't want to lose custody or pay her. I try to keep her calm and we end up fucking during last month of arrangements. We go to therapy. Therapist says she's a strong independent woman, I'm lucky to have her. My gut says she's trash and don't trust her. I'm lonely and want a family for my son. I tell her that divorce is happening but if she wants to try, she needs to be patient. She lasts a week and then tells me that if I don't show her love, she can't do it. That's it. I say okay and try to move on. Divorce is final and a month later, she is at my door. Begging to come back. This is a month after COVID. I say no. She wants to do therapy and make up for what happened. I say no. She's furious she's rejected for the first time in her life. A few weeks after, a random like on my social media. It's an older man and then takes the like off. Do some research, it is the owner of a house she used to visit when I had a private investigator to get proof she was a whore. She used to go to this house late at night. Her current sugar daddy, he's 50 and net worth of a few million. Don't know the allowance but whatever. End of story this is a crazy story and maybe a new one here. There are many details that are left out due to story length but believe me, these are additional things I found out that would make me seem crazy and paranoid. Regardless, I've been okay with denying her another chance and staying away from her. However, I keep feeling lonely and hopeless. Right now, I feel women aren't worth my time and I'm not willing to be vulnerable and put myself out there again. But for how long? It's been over a year. Giving advice and actually putting it into action. Rant? I made my original post a few days ago about how I found my ex in a sugar baby website advertising herself. She used her pictures, information and talked to men about things going on with her life. Her only excuse was I wasn't fully happy, and had too much time to myself. Anyways, you can read the story in my previous post. After making that post, I started reading other people's posts and posting advice. Honestly, things I want to be able to do myself when it matters. When the sudden wave of regret, depression and sadness comes crashing on you. That's when applying the things you've learned matters and when you should actually apply the things you do. Today, I had to face my ex-wife because she wanted to see our son. We haven't spent time, three of us, since January. It only took five minutes of us walking together to go down the rabbit hole and start thinking about what she did, what I could have done to avoid it, how she acted after separation and what happened during the time we were trying to reconcile right before divorce was finalized. I brought up the conversation with her and soon we were talking about the same bullshit, and I asked the stupidest thing ever. Please take down the picture you have of us together as is public and I don't want people seeing it. Absolutely pathetic. She was laughing, joking and even told me she still loves me but what is she gonna do? Be a nun. Anyways, it isn't just about giving advice to others and reading what people write to us. It is about applying it and making sure you continue with your life the best way possible. Life post divorce with kids is hard mode. It isn't easy. And hopefully, it is easier than if you would have stayed together and it crashes 10 20 years later. In my case, it was after 2 years. Got 80% custody and only paid for my lawyer fees. I should be more than content with that outcome but here I am. A year later writing about it on Reddit. Why is there still doubt in my mind? Advice. Long story short, caught my wife of two years advertising herself in a sugar baby website while visiting her country. 
After separation, she made a new profile in the US and we arranged a deal in money for exchange of meetups. She claims it was a prank on me. Always using her info and photos. She claims to have never done this to prostitute herself, and that it was just curiosity due to depression after moving to a new city with me and getting pregnant shortly after. Anyways, she has never admitted anything. She lies at the beginning and after presented with evidence only claims to have done it for curiosity, nothing else. All the evidence points to her actually going through with it. However, my brain and her maybe lies do gymnastics on me and make me think that maybe it was just curiosity and boredom and not something to prostitute herself. It's already been a year and during this time I have, received messages from a woman saying she slept with her fiancé we tried reconciliation for maybe a month after six months of separation. She didn't like I wasn't being loving and told me she didn't have the patience for me to recover she has slept with several other men, but that's honestly none of my business. She has however told me she loves and that she would get back I don't want it. Logics say bye bye. Brain and loneliness tell me to try. WTF can I do? New flair for this subreddit, suggestion. Advice. Hello all, I know I've only been posting on this subreddit for a short period of time. But please, read the entire post as to why I make my suggestion. My suggestion, new flair category. We need some positive flair in which progress in one's personal life and happy moments during this process are the only things covered. Nothing about the ex. Nothing about cheating. Only progress and how you've been able to stay focused on yourself and away from negative thoughts that haunted you for so long. How you were able to completely forget about what happened and actually laughed and had fun. Today I was driving back with my son from the park and it started raining like crazy. We slowed down and what is usually a 20 minutes drive back home, turned into a 40 to 50 minutes drive. To make it fun, I decided to start playing some rock from the 2000s. Stuff that I knew. Papa Roach, Limp Biscuit, Marilyn Manson, etc. I was yelling the songs and bouncing my head from side to side and laughing at my 2.5 years old. They just have some fun music. And for the entire ride home I was able to laugh and have a blast. Something I haven't been able to do in a long time. I got distracted and the music stopped for two seconds. My ex came into my mind. Not now. I went back to last resort by PR and kept laughing. It was some silly fun but something that was really able to keep me away from thinking about my last year and its sorrows. I think that yelling and endorphin release helped the rest of the day as I have been in a really positive state of mind and been hopeful about my future. Where I'm trying to get here is that sometimes we get so used to having fun with our ex-spouses that we might forget how to have fun alone. How to entertain ourselves without the need of that person who hurt us. While I'm not suggesting in any way that venting doesn't help, sometimes we need to be able to say what made us happy during this recovery process and share it with others so that it can maybe spark some creativity. Energies, positive and negative, are contagious. And while we're reading the posts of those in need to vent, probably me in the near future, we might need some bleach and read how some others have been able to have moments of happiness. Anyways, thank you all for being so supportive since I've been posting. Now. She wants to talk again? Rant? Ever since the separation, little over 1.5 years, I've tried to work things about so that our son can maintain a routine. Even with two different homes. At least with similar sleep slash bath schedules, eating breakfast in the morning, etc. multiple times, I was told to just respect the fact that we make different decisions and have different cultures slash values. So, about a month ago, I decided to block the ex on absolutely everything I could and only maintain communication via text slash call for the sole purpose of co-parenting. 
Actually, the only thing I had left to block was WhatsApp, where I wanted to keep my profile pictures private. Last Sunday, it was her birthday and my weekend with him. She didn't ask to swap weekends or for him to spend the day with her. She texted Saturday at 9pm to see what I had planned with him because she wanted to see him. I texted I would be going to the best in the am. Ignored. I then came back from the beach and texted her I was back. Ignored. Monday she texted thanking me for making her day better by bringing her son to her so that she could hug and kiss him. Sarcasm OFC. We had agreed last Monday to talk in person about our son because he was putting up some fits. He's 2.5 years old. A behavior he hasn't done with me. But she insisted, and I agreed. Monday came, the day after her birthday and she couldn't meet. She wanted to meet today and I don't see the need for in person. Talk about our son has always been her excuse to start talking about reconciliation. And suddenly, I'm the bad guy. I don't want the best for my son and he's not going to grow up normal, because I don't want to be friendly with her. I really should have thought who I was having a kid with. Someone I wish I didn't have to talk to and now I have to until I die. I if this is the right sub for this. But this year, I've had huge ups and downs. With the downs, being deeper than they usually are. Little backstory, I divorced my wife of two years last year in April when I found out she had been making sugar baby profiles to meet rich men. We have a son whom I have majority custody of and I love deeply but is the only thing keeping her and I in touch. Now, ITWTF is wrong with me. These downs I get bring me down completely. They've gotten worse ever since I started working from home. I think it is normal to feel this way since I'm not really socializing with anyone or making new friends but I'd what to do not to get this way. I feel an emptiness in my stomach and lack of appetite. I don't feel like doing anything but sleep to forget everything but there's only so much I can sleep in a day. I want to be motivated to make my son happy but I don't even want to do that. I want to hang out with the few people in my life ATM whom I like and call my friends but I'm just in such a bad mood that I'm not going to bring joy to their lives. Are these depressive episodes or WTF? I'm tired of talking to the same people over the same feelings over and over again. I want to go back to being the person who used to bring joy and smiles to others. But in reality, I just feel weak and a load on everyone's back even though on paper I'm successful and doing well for my life at my age, great job where I recently got promoted and about to get my masters. I WTF to do TBH. I who to turn to to stop feeling this way and I don't want to get close to people unless I'm ready and feel like I'm gonna bring joy to them. However, I don't wanna be alone anymore. Apathy, is the only way to keep them away. Rant? Little summary on my history, been separated for a year and a half. Divorced, since January 2020. I caught her on a sugar baby website with a profile with her information on it. Because of plans we were making while together, I have good reason to believe she was gonna make money as a prostitute and tell me it was her business. Have through a roller coaster of emotions and the way I've treated my ex and separation. From insulting her to attempting reconciliation and trying to be intimate slash cuddle. When it comes down to treating the mother of my child, I've also tried multiple things anger, friendliness and apathy. Anger and happiness, require too much effort on my side and gives the impression that I care. I don't want either. However, they both affect our son in a different way. One negative, and the other positive. However, both of these lead to my ex thinking I still want us to get back together and insisting on working things out. I don't. Just this weekend for example, she was wanting to have a talk and not use texts. She leaves and asks for some info I just gave her. I told her through text that that's why texts are better, 
you're very forgetful. To which she replied do you wanna fk? I ignored, and then she said you're so rude to me for no reason. I just wanna be friendly. Which I also ignored. Apathy, ignoring her every attempt at anything is the best way to keep her away. Not looking at her eyes, replying to her texts, etc. However, when it comes to our son, I basically ignore what he does while they're spending the 20% time they have. It was good, until. She started manipulating me this weekend saying I just wanna talk about our son. I guess you don't care. I love my son. I know the importance of growing up with people who love him and in an environment filled with trust. That's why I decided to divorce and why I never want to involve him with our fights. Mommy, and daddy divorced but we still love you. Whenever you want to spend time with me, LMK because I'll always be down. Having said that, she knows how involved I am and she uses him to get back at me. I don't want her manipulating me again but what should I do long term? Why do I even bother? Every attempt at reconciliation fails due to me not acting loving. Advice. Long story short, 1.5 years since separation. 6 mo plus since divorce. Caught my wife on a sugar baby website. She recently confessed it was because she wanted money but never slept with anyone. We didn't lack anything financially but she didn't feel trusted or secure due to me not adding her to the bank account. Since separation, she's been doing her own thing. I even caught her on another site with a fake profile and she claims that was to prank me. She says she knew I'd be looking for her but the profile, pictures and conversations we had, not to say her showing up to the address, didn't seem at all like a prank. Reconciliation number one, divorce was a must for me. I wasn't going to trust half of my life to someone who disappointed me so badly. We attempted to work things out and I told her what I needed from her. Delete her social media and have patience. This wasn't gonna be easy. 14 days in, she sends a picture of us telling me she loves me. I didn't reply. Next morning, she says she can't take it anymore, she doesn't feel loved. Reconciliation number two, after number one, she went to online dating and what not. We have a son together and we were arguing more than normal. One day, we decided to sit down to talk about him. One thing lead, to another and we had sex. And then again. And then we talked about maybe getting back. So here I am, a week post talk and she's done because, A, I didn't text or call at all yesterday, B, when she came to my place I didn't look happy to see her. Take it, I had to bathe, cook, feed, clip nails, etc, our son and I had a really busy day at work. She jokingly asked what I was cooking for us for dinner to which I said nothing, I was tired and just wanted to relax. So, I don't even know why I'm making this post. I'm not sure if I want to move on without her or not. Life is very lonely right now. I'm in a city where I don't have friends. My mother is nearby but there's issues with her and she makes life a little more difficult than easier for me. And both, my ex and I, are socially equal in the sense of how many people we know. I've dated some girls but I'm so bitter and untrustworthy that I don't even enjoy having sex unless I'm drunk and stop worrying. My ex messed up, I messed up and I sometimes think it is worth rebuilding. Yet, it is difficult for me to express happiness to see her when I'm so used to being alone now that her company means sort of whatever. Yet, I want her here and for us to be patient. In addition to that, I think the things she says is because of her narcissistic personality or because she's pretending to be strong. Things I shouldn't ignore because they are red flags and she's telling me who she is. Things like I know how great I am. How hardworking, funny and charismatic, I could be with anyone but I chose to be with you, I'm happier now without you than I was with you. While it may sound like a dumb question, there's also the look at actions, not what they say. And her actions hurt. 
I'm not loving like before, that she wants to get back, that she enjoys time with me? I'm super confused and don't want to make a decision out of necessity and loneliness and further affect the lives of my son, her, our families and especially mine. Thanks for any advice. What now? Post separation. D-Day, April 1st, 2019. Backstory, caught my ex in a sugar baby website to make some money. After filing for divorce and investigating, I found multiple profiles she had over the years. Behavior post-divorce, she started dating a few weeks after. I confirmed she was sleeping with someone a month or so after divorce. I caught her on a new site she supposedly made to prank me as she knew I would make enter the site to find her. In this fake profile, I agreed with her to meet for money and she did go to the place of meeting. We tried getting back once but she couldn't continue as I didn't say I love you. The anger is now gone and I just want to be friendly slash nice to her. I cannot be. I don't feel like dating or meeting other people. Feels absurd to invest time in new people. Sometimes the idea of getting back with the ex is easier as is someone I already know. However, I think she's blind to her narcissism and doesn't see it. Telling me things like people are dying to be with me and here you are, ignoring me. She doesn't even say it in a mean context but rather, that we are both high quality people and should be together. We have a son and want the best for him. I feel bad that my son is spending more time with me than her but she drove me to this. I just wanted to vent a little I guess. There's no point to this post except that I hope I can meet someone enough for me to be in fantasy land again. Ita for following the divorce decree with my daughter tonight. Not the a-hole? I caught my ex on a sugar baby website last year. She was trying to get money on the side from men. I didn't trust her and so I filed for divorce. I think it is best to have separated when my daughter was two years old rather than when she was a teenager. And, while the separation won't affect her as much, it still will growing up. Especially if X and I are having issues co-parenting. This week sucked. Tuesday was her birthday, and today is Thanksgiving. Tuesdays, are with mom. However, because of the time sharing we agreed to, I got to spend 6 830 pm. Thursdays are my day. Because of the year, I get to spend dinner with her. However, she wrote today, a few hours ago, I have dinner to go to. I will pick her up at 4 pm, since you got to spend last Thanksgiving with her. I obviously said no. Especially since a few weeks back, when I was trying to negotiate our time for Christmas she said that I'm going to follow the divorce decree and that's it. Even though I was trying to split those last two weeks. One with her and one with me. She just didn't bother to read and think about what I sent and replied by calling me an idiot. And so today, I replied with a pic of that conversation and politely said tonight is my turn. She went back to psychological warfare saying I wasn't doing what's best for our daughter, etc. Ita for enforcing this decree. A slip-up resulted in an SDD. Update. Background, D-Day, late March 2019, divorce was finalized January 2020. I discovered my then wife had been making profiles as a sugar baby for two years with the intention of making some money, there's a lot more details in my previous posts. Corona quarantine and having moved to a new city was rough on me. Took me a long time to get out of my down state. I think around August to October 2020 is when I started feeling good about being alone. Story, X was still trying to get back together. Although she wasn't saying it she was stopping by more often and chatting a bit. Valentine's Day was her weekend with our child. She mentioned she was busy Sunday and so I needed to stay with our child. I picked him up Sunday morning, and was with him all day. 
I put him to sleep and around 11 p I get a text from the ex. Are you awake? Yes. Can I come by? Are you okay to drive? I'll be there in 30 minutes. She came by. She was drunk and dressed like she was clubbing. We watched a movie and when it was time for bed we got comfortable and had sex. She left the next morning without saying much. Thursday of that week, it burned when I peed. I didn't go away after a day or two. Then, I had some weird secretion. Oh god, I'm gonna die right now. Went to the doctor on Monday and labs on Tuesday. Got a shot and some antibiotics. Two days later, positive for gonorrhea. I called her to let her know. She didn't believe me and denied having sex with anyone else. I said I wasn't blaming her, just doing my due diligence of informing her so she can get tested as well. That evening, she came by after doing her research. She confessed that she has had sex with other people but with protection. I didn't care. I just saw her as another girl at that point who I wouldn't date again because they gave me an STD. Like if it was my lack of anger or not caring about it, but she then has the audacity to invite me to a trip. She misses me and is embarrassed about this. I declined politely saying we need to heal first. She laughs it off saying yeah and then leaves. Use protection you all.